All right, another nothing video. Nothing video means my nothing series. This is what eighty or more than that. Yeah. When I started the nothing series, I just thought I'll make one video with no script. It's become so popular with people. <laughs> I seriously never thought anyone would be bothered. Anyway, I get. Uh, meaningful meaningful comments from people for these videos of mine and uh, many like minded people in fact of people who don't like me also sometimes after watching this video hey you're not such a bad guy man <laughs> anyway uh, in this nothing uh, video i'll share with you uh, the recovery process from the sickness um just a few lines and but more importantly <clears throat> when i did the digital clean up this time you won't believe man deleted like 3 3 tera 3.1 terabyte so much stuff and i accidentally deleted a very big folder it's gone anyway luckily that was not very important <sighs> and uh, the major realization This one will really <clears throat> will ring a bell for you. So let's start. Uh, first one was uh, for those of you who are interested. My daughter is healing now. Healing in the sense uh, there is still cough, there is cold, but no more fever. My wife also got sick, not too serious, but she is getting okay. I got uh, pretty badly hit with the fever, but I still continued work. uh the primary reason i needed to uh take these two days off was not only for my digital clean up when i was sick work just piled on and you know it's a month end so i have to close out all the job listings <coughs> of people who are applying for jobs in the middle east uh september new jobs i have to verify those and speak to people who want me to share about jobs I to share the CVs of people who I had, so a lot of stuff was there. Lot, so took a long time. Anyway, I cleared that out. Um, also, uh, you know, I bought the Mac Studio, right? And you also know that I bought the <coughs> Galaxy Ultra. No, uh, sorry, Galaxy Fold. So obviously, it was time for me to change the setup because my uh, 27 inch iMac. man that uh, machine has become slow yeah i mean when i put a video to upload or render it takes bloody sometimes 15 minutes just to you know make some changes and before starting the export process also 15 minutes you know you just sit down and do what and then obviously you get distracted with other things so it was like shish now i have to change these technology companies are really taking us for a ride they purposely slow down the system so that you're forced to upgrade and the worst part for me okay about the mac studio 2000 dollars now to have you know because it has limited number of ports so i had to buy a cal digit that was another what 600 dollars and then for each uh cable if i use the old cable i'll get the same old speed so i have to upgrade new cables each cable is 100 dollars oh thunderbolt 3 thunderbolt 4 they simply you know they'll not give you everything in one go they'll give just okay new model change everything oh new model now change these things ah uh, ended up spending so much money man and yeah so anyway can't help it this is life so because i make a i own my daily bread can't have excuses there and by the way i changed my setup from horizontal to a vertical monitor it's a new feel let's see if it improves productivity i bought uh, made a custom made stand i'll share a separate video about this for those of you interested in my studio setup and no the same old plastic chair i use <laughs> 
Anyway, so I was doing all that. Accidentally deleted a one terabyte folder. I don't know how the hell that happened. Uh, all my raw footage, everything got deleted. It's okay. Happens, happens. Can't do anything about it. I know. Crazy, right? But anyway, the, the shocking uh, thing was when I went through my... Uh, I was sorting out the hard disk this time. The 10 terabyte hard disk, uh, sorting out the files in that. To my surprise, as I was going through, you know, one thing is, you know, sometimes when you save, you save the same folder in three different locations. So let's say, for example, I have 20,000 fonts. I've saved 20,000 fonts in uh, backup, a folder named backup, 20,000 fonts in the same one folder. I've saved it in creative work and I've saved it miscellaneous there also. So I was just, sheesh, man, what the hell is this? So as I was sorting all that out, I found a folder where old, you know, videos of mine were there. And the thing about this folder was it was it just had numbers, like dates. So it's not too sure what it was. When I clicked on it, to my shock and surprise, I found old video footage of me and Anita. Oh, it's like bloody hell, I thought I deleted all this. Found old photographs, old uh, videos, some of them like, ooh. <laughs> not the ooh, ooh one, just who, not ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that one I deleted. Okay, this one. But yeah, they were still spicy ones. And I, I was like, bloody hell, man, just look at me. And it kind of made sense why I was so crazy for Anita. Why? It, it just, yeah, you know, all these years I was breaking my head. Why did I fall in love? Actually, when I looked at the video footage now, I kind of understood. It was a combination, like a perfect storm, you know. What do I mean by that? It's see now. This is a young girl who who's only uh, doesn't have any responsibilities. She just wants to be adventurous, have fun, sex. She loved sex, and she loved getting romantic, and she just wanted to have fun. And for me, I was like, okay, here is this young petite girl who is completely bananas over. Me, okay, okay. I have other women, but this one is kind of cute, and you know the caring thing. She's a young girl, and she was mad about sex, and she wanted to try different things, and she was adventurous. She was like, you say, let's smooch her, okay, let's do it, you know that kind of thing. So obviously, it turns you on, and then added to that, she gives you all the innocent talk, like, I, uh, oh, you mean. You're, you're mine, okay? You're mine, okay? You're my baby. You, oh, I want you to do this to me, that to me, and you do it only to me. Uh, well, obviously, you're like, oh, oh, okay. And then the romance and the innocence and buying the gift. So we were actually on a honeymoon phase for those few months that we were together. There was no talk about work, responsibility, life. Just fun, sex, romance, movies going out clubs, showing off friends. It was like a perfect honeymoon phase, you know? No responsibilities, nothing. And I was a jackass that time. I just wanted to have fun. I was a salaried mentality guy. So, you know, we'll go to this uh, outlet, eat food. Okay, we'll make out there where nobody's watching. Okay, then we'll go watch a movie after that. And we'll make out in the theater. Okay, now we'll sit in the car. We'll go for a long drive. And then come home late and have fun and sex again and get up and let's do something adventurous. It's like a holiday. <sighs> There's nothing practical or consistent or realistic about that life. It is just like you meet this girl on a holiday trip, a beautiful girl. It becomes a whirlwind, you know, whirlwind romance. <sighs> I, like an idiot, which I was, thought that was life that time. It was fun. Honestly speaking, it was damn fun. There was nothing to worry. Only fun. Only we were supposed to blow money and have fun. Show off and make out physical pleasure, mental pleasure, visual pleasure. 
just on a holiday, man. I looked at all those videos, I was like, bloody hell, man. Even the videos we used to shoot, we were talking about sex, fucking, uh, I'll do this to you, oh, do you want, okay, let's smooch and take a video when you're smooching. Yeah, yeah, those videos are there. I'm going to share it, shut up. Uh, don't worry, I have put it in a hard disk and kept it separate. So even network, you no, know, even if anyone hacks into it, they can't see it. It's not uploaded in the iCloud, don't worry. <laughs> not that dumb. And even if it were to leak, who the fuck cares? Yeah. But anyway, I'm not going to make it leak. Right now. Don't worry, no sex videos. <laughs> the last thing I need is sex video leaked. Loy's sex video. Anyway, so these uh, videos are all there. All these memories. It just made me marvel. It's like, what a different phase of my life. What a different... I'm looking at Loy Macedo, but I'm looking at someone who's so different to who I am today. Honestly, if I would meet a guy like that, let's say I would meet younger Loy Macedo, who's like, I wouldn't want to spend a single second because he's a fucking idiot, man. Seriously, that's how I was. No seriousness, nothing, just show off, just fun. And then obviously, as I skim, skimmed through more videos, I found uh, uh, that phase I went through. Oh, by the way, I saw videos of me and my ex-boss. When I was working as an employee, I was like, you know, second in command to him. The speeches we, he used to give, we used to give and talk. And <coughs> I was a big dog in a small yard. The confidence and the yeah. ignorance, the arrogance. Yeah, I was, okay, fairly serious. But I can tell you, it's like uh, the employee mindset. You think you know everything because you have a salary, you have earnings. Uh, you don't give a damn about life. If I would look at Loy Macedo, then I'd be like, uh, okay, can say hi, how are you, bye. But this guy... You know, only keep in touch with him just for the business side of things. Or just, hi, how are you? You know, just normal, intelligent chap. But full of himself and his own world. But at least better than the time I was with Anita. Then, uh, the part of losing everything and coming back. I think that was where the renaissance took place. And here I'm looking at a guy who is trying to find his foothold, trying to find his calling, his talent, his, you know, thinking about the future a little bit. And lo and behold, I saw myself with that, my so-called best friend, whom I ended up, not so-called, my best friend who I eventually had to get married because the law of the land, in uh, UAE those days, couldn't stay as boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, when someone found out. The emotions were real, the feelings were real, the genuineness to want to make that relationship was real. I saw how when someone truly loves you, how selfless they are. I saw a woman who was not like stunning, hot, beautiful, sexy, but was grounded. Great human being. So I was with her and uh, I saw those memories, those moments, happy birthday and, you know, I just, uh, I was just like, it was a very uh, powerful, meaningful moment. <clears throat> However, when I, you know, when that video finished, obviously it's not watching them in detail. I just realized what all I had to do in order to ensure that I was true to my goals. You know, sometimes when uh, you want to achieve a goal, you have to make certain choices. 
which are rather questionable. I had a choice between sacrificing my entire life, what I wanted and to be with her, which morally was, she was there for me, I being there for her. Or uh, I had to choose what was best for me. Not too proud about it, but uh, I know for a fact I wouldn't be happy otherwise. And that's the reason I never had a baby with her, never wanted to settle down. And the worst part is, I couldn't stay in UAE because my passport was up for renewal. My old photograph didn't have tattoos, so at least I could send somebody else to get the legal work done. But my renewed passport would have to have this photograph tattooed one, and then they wouldn't renew my visa. Because if you have tattoos on, visible tattoos on your face or anywhere, or your hands, you can't get a, a residency or work permit in Middle East countries. So, I, uh, I was in a fix. What do I do? All these years I was in my comfort zone. Okay, I'll be with her, have my jing bang fun outside. She'll never know. Continue life, go with the flow. But then when your back is against the wall and you have to make decisive measures, you cannot, uh, decisions, you cannot uh, be in your comfort zone anymore. You can't be, I don't give a fuck. It's okay, go with the flow. I had to make choices. And lo and behold, one thing led to another. Break up and close down and come here to Thailand. Oh, another phase. Another phase of my life. And lo and behold, here I am. Hmm. I'll tell you, when you see... When you see 15, 16 years of your life in video and photographs, oh, sheesh, man, you're like, fucking hell. Uh, just imagine, you. I want you to think, if you have uh, videos and photographs of spanning 20 years, you just go through them. Ask yourself, where were you? What were you doing? Where were you working? What was your salary? How did you look physically? How was your relationships? How were they? Who was important to you? What was important to you? Forget uh, 20 years. When you even check five years, sometimes it's a big thing. For me, it was baffling. It was seriously shocking. <coughs> I couldn't believe. I seriously couldn't believe how much I've changed, how much those relationships have gone by, priorities, and the person who I was and the person I've become. Hmm. If someone would have told Loy Macedo at the age of 30, listen, one day I'm going to get married to a Thai woman. Like, what? Yeah, you're going to migrate to Thailand. Are you fucking crazy? You're going to be simple. You're going to walk and have a YouTube channel. Are you? Forget that. You tattoo your whole body and face. I'd be like, what are you talking about, man? Are you drunk? And see, just imagine if any one of you could go back in time and meet Loy Macedo when he was young and say, one day you'll be bald, you'll be fully tattooed, fully, from your face to everything else, you look like a freak, like a lizard, you'll be in the middle of Thailand on a small island, you'll make videos, you'll walk half naked, and uh, you'll be happy with one uh, lady and one baby. Oh, by the, by the way, that will be your fourth marriage. Just imagine someone would tell you this. You'd be like, uh, boss, are you all right? What are you smoking? Like, mentally, you're okay. You'd laugh. 
Oh, so is my story, man. Okay, agreed. Mine is a little extreme. Not normal. Seriously makes you think. Seriously makes you think. Anyway, for me, uh, now what? <laughs> now I only know that you go with the flow. What, are the, what has to happen, happen. You know, that song is a, Oh, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be, blah, 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 something, something. Oh, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> hmm. Life. Anyway. For me, it was uh, quite a... Quite a roller coaster ride, but one thing I can tell you, huh? one thing I'll tell you. I'm glad I didn't marry that female. I'm glad we didn't have a longer relationship. She's a hunt. This is not me trying to bash her up. This is not me trying to, you know, redeem myself by putting her down. She was, she's a fucking kid here. Yeah. A kid whose upbringing is totally messed up. Maybe intellectually, in terms of getting good marks and all that, she's okay. Uh, studies. Character-wise, no way, man. No way. Health also doesn't support her. She is one of those entitled youngsters, you know. I can't imagine her being the mother of my child. No way. I'm sure she would have the same thing to say. I'd never imagine her loser like you or most of my ex-girlfriends when they had to break up they're like can't imagine you lawyer freak being the father of my child totally respect and understand that because obviously who would dream of having a husband or a father to their kid looking like this because let's face it external appearances matter and this is not like i was born with a disease i chose to do it you know, if I was a normal guy and, you know, I'm not going to dream for my daughter to be a complete tattooed freak with implants and looking like a mutant, a zombie. I'd be like, no fucking way. Man. You have to be realistic and I'm, I'm being honest with you. I, even me, I, I wouldn't want that kind of person for my daughter. Because... We judge people based on how they look. But be realistic about it, right? So if my girlfriends are to say, oh, no fucking way, I'm glad I didn't marry you. Totally agree with them. I personally don't think this girl would have changed. Until, until she would get married and have two children and say, 10, 15 years have gone by. Then and only then she would grow up. I don't think she's married until now. Uh, she was 18 when I was uh, 31. So let's say 20 and 30, 10 years, for example. Now I'm 45. She's 35. So let's say she's 30. 30 is still not mature. Unless and until she marries and has two kids. And she goes through the grind for 10 years of her life. She's not going to change. She'll still remain an immature fucking kid. But the difficulty with her is she's born diabetic. And she smokes and drinks. Obviously, I know she's not going to stop. And her mentality is fucked up. At least those days, like how I was. If she's the same, my condolences to her. Even... Me, if I was the same Loy Macedo, those days, fuck, I'd be destroyed. I changed and evolved because I got away from society and suffered immensely. It's only when you suffer, no? It's only when you get away from society, get away from your friends, get away from your relatives, get away from your comfort zone and push yourself to something very uncomfortable. Only then you grow up as a man. 
And I grew up as a man only after being alone. As long as you're in the protective custody of your family, you're not going to grow. No way. With your friends, relatives, and a salary easy coming every month. You need to get away from it all. My prediction for this ex is this only. Until she gets two kids and she's married for 10 years, she'll not grow up. After that, she'll realize what is life. Then whatever comes from her mouth, her mind, her heart, will make her realize what she did was right or wrong. Or I'm not saying that she dumping me was wrong. Maybe it was the best thing she ever did. <laughs> but her and me, not at all sustainable. The level of maturity, or rather lack thereof, would have destroyed this relationship and her priority is totally different. In fact, when she did speak to me again, uh, this is when I was uh, 36, 10 years ago. In fact, she was irritating, man. Spewing all fucking nonsense. I was wondering like, who the fuck is this? Then when I realized it's her, I was like, shit, I'm not expecting you to be perfect. I was still a playboy there at that time also, but not as much, but she was, so fucking immature and irritating. I remember she talking about the teddy bear I gave her. Imagine I gave her 10 years ago. Okay. That is like, imagine I'm saying 10 years before this, 10 years. Okay. So imagine I'd get, and she, you know, Shanu loves you. Shanu's heart is not beating. Oh, oh, you want to talk to Shanu? What the fuck? What the fuck? And I'd added her to my, those days also I had a, like one group, WhatsApp group. It was my VIP clients and all that. I added her there, soft corner, okay. She's saying, Roy, should I tell everyone, uh, what? Uh, the way you, you know, you only you knew how to go down on me and eat it or some shit like that. Okay, she didn't say, uh, go down on me and something she put after that. Just imagine that's how she is telling, I'll send it. I was so fucking pissed. This is my fucking business group. It's not a fucking uh, filled with kids and talking about sexual orgies, man. I gave it to her so badly. <laughs> you want to fucking destroy your life. Uh, get the fuck out and never contact me again. I think she had it because I, I never, I was never threatening to her. I was never, I never shouted at her. That was the first time I did because I was so fucking pissed, man. Hmm. I'm sure everything, uh, her blood must have drained out. She must have, because she never heard me screaming and shouting at anyone. She never, that is the first time she saw, first time what real rage is. Because by the time she, I didn't have any feelings for her. Today, if she would come back, just that we shared a common memory of phase, I'd be respectable, you know, respectful for that. You know, you have that little soft corner for those memories, but you know, you have to keep a, you have to keep the respect. I can't talk to her now and say, hey, uh, remember my, me putting my tongue there and, you know, how, how would you like that? Come on, man. Unless, of course, you are chatting with someone and you're so close and intimate that you can talk sexual jokes with each other. But that takes time to build up, right? You can't just out of the blue meet your ex. Hey, remember how you were swallowing what I gave you? Yeah. Anyway. So went through the whole phase, went through everything, went through all those memories. And when I <laughs> finished the folders and all, I was like, even Toastmasters speeches and all that, how I used to spend time and try to give seminars and conferences and attend and wear a suit and network and show off. 
all futile phases of my life. But yeah, they have all added up to this. But it's shocking, man. 15 years of my life, fuck. 15 years of my life just gone. Yeah. Fuck. Where did it go? Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. It's been a crazy ride for me. But like they say, life goes on, you move on. And yes, upgraded my setup. And now, hmm. by the way, FYI, today is August, September, October, November, December. Four more months and it's going to be 2023. Can you believe we went through two years of COVID? Anyway, chill man, you guys uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. <coughs> Good, bad, ugly. Here goes another nothing series. Where our life has gone and where we are headed. Chill, you guys take care.